There we go. I have my mic muted. <laughs> you can see I'm ready to go today. <laughs> Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The messages of inspirational stories is proudly brought to you by the good guys at the six minute webinar. And Donna, I'm just already starting to fall apart all the pieces. Here. <laughs> How are you? Of yesterday. I love it. Oh yeah. I tell you, I got to find some new little inserts for those things because the right one fits well, the left one doesn't. So I guess it's one of those deals like you go into a shoe store and one foot's a little bigger than the other one. <laughs> uh, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, but we're so glad that you tuned in today. If you catch the show live or if you're watching us on YouTube or, you know, that's our YouTube channel, or if you can also catch us on Facebook Live, our Facebook page, Messages of Inspirational Stories. We're so glad that you're here. I am so glad to be here today because, ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a treat. Donna, the first thing I want to share with them is what's coming up in a few weeks. We haven't got it scheduled yet, but it's going to be a week long it's about how to get out of debt and acquire wealth on any income. Ooh, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, Jim, we were really blessed to uh, have Rainey in our lives. And mm. you reached out to him and talked to him about this. Yes. I reached out to Rennie Gabriel and I went over an idea with him and he says, wow, Jim, he says, I've been thinking about doing the same thing for an entire week on my podcast. And I <laughs> says, well, brother, guess what? We'll be your test monkeys for that. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. Well, the beautiful thing about, about Rainey is that he was truly uh, poor. And I do mm. mean poor. I don't mean like, oh, my gosh, I got five bucks left in, in my checkbook until payday but my gas tank's full and, and I've got enough food. I think I can squeeze by. I mean, he was poor, Jim. He went out and collected aluminum cans and sold them to feed, get food for his family. He sure did. And the thing I like about Rennie, uh, I know what he's worth. I'll just say he's very well to do. If he wanted to buy a right. nice home, he could pay cash for it. If he wanted to buy a new car, even a, a little airplane, he could pay cash for it. Right. But my point being, He's a down to earth kind of a guy. He's he my did. kind of people. Gosh. Yeah. He, he never, doesn't use big words and, and mm -hmm. flip around and, and he just, you know, he just tells you how the cow eat the cabbage and no uncertain terms. Mm -hmm. The thing I like about Rennie is that he never forgot where he came from. Right. And his mission in life. See right now he could fully retire and just, you know, own his investments that he's made. He owns rental oh, yeah. properties. He could just be living the life of luxury, but he puts on a podcast. He puts on classes. He wants to reach out and help others because Rennie knows what it's like. Right. To, to be flat to be down, broke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as Johnny Rivers, I mentioned that song yesterday, the post side of town. Right. Rennie lived in the post side of town. Well, and, you know, Jim, this is what we do. This mm -hmm. is what we do on messages of inspirational stories. We bring to our audience things that can help them mm -hmm. that can help all of us. And there isn't, trust me, there isn't a show that we haven't done that Jim or I or Tanya have not learned from. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've learned so, a lot. So we learn just as much as our audience when we, mm -hmm. when we go into these shows and, and talk about the different subjects that we do. You're certainly right. We certainly do. Because the fact of it is, Donna, is that, you know, it's impossible to teach others something without you learning something, too. Right. It's just right. in the universe. It is. It really is. Mm -hmm. And Donna, I got to give you a plug because you're such a tremendous friend and big help here. Your website is DonnaGuinois.com. It took me two and a half months and three years to <laughs> learn how to pronounce that. <laughs> He's the, not the, kidding, guys. <laughs> not the sharpest tool in the, in the box, huh? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Because, uh, you know, I asked Donna, Don McGrath, yeah, I says, how did they pronounce, how does Donna pronounce her last name? He says, Jim, I don't know. <laughs> he says, I've heard it pronounced 
three different ways. <laughs> and so I said, okay, well, you're a lot of help. And I said, well, Dandy, I'm just going to, you know, ask her. And she says, Jim, it's real easy. It's just gain wa. Yep. That's what she told me. So you see the website there, Donna Guinois.com. And when someone goes to that website, Donna, what will they, what will they see? What will oh, they're going to see just a, a bit of a bio about me, about people who I know one of my previous radio shows that I had mm -hmm. and how, you know, how I've involved to help people. That mm -hmm. is what I choose to do because when we have emotions that and energy, you know, things that are stuck and bottled inside of us, mm -hmm. it brings us down. It affects yeah. our, not only our mental health, but it affects our physical health. And oh, if yeah. we don't learn how to get rid of that mm -hmm. and, and in a constructive way that works for us, you will never um, be able to have that freedom and mm -hmm. And I say that with confidence because I've been there. That's how mm. this started. This was not just something that, you know, I went to school for and I read a couple of books and I passed a few classes and courses. This was uh, the school of hard knocks, if you will. So yeah. I know what it's like to be scared, to be uh, depressed. I know what it's like to be a single mom raising three children mm -hmm. and be faced with, um, life-threatening diseases, uh, brain surgeries, where three back-to-back -back brain surgeries, where I couldn't talk uh, well for two years afterwards. And anybody who knows me <laughs> knows how difficult that was for me, not being mm -hmm. able to form a full sentence. And it took almost two years for my body and my mind to recover from mm. the surgeries, just because it was so invasive and so close together. Yeah, because the first surgery, that was to see what the problem was. The second surgery right. was to correct it. And the right. third surgery was to make sure that it was corrected. Right. And oh, my goodness. And, you know, I never the thing that really gets me about you, Donna, is that fateful day. I, I think of it as a fateful day. You had just found out that, you know, in addition to your going to need brain surgery, what else did you find out on that fateful day there? My other doctor said, uh, yeah, all the tests that we've done on you for the last two and a half, three months have confirmed you, you have MS, you have recurring remitting uh, multiple sclerosis. Mm -hmm. So that one, you know, that kind of took me back for a minute. Oh, yeah, uh, my youngest was with me. Um, that was not an easy time. Uh, she had a, a difficult time with it. And then of course, you know, I, I was having a difficult time with it, but it was worse for me because I was watching my, one of my children uh, try to come to terms with, you know, her, her mother, me being, being ill and possibly ending mm -hmm. up crippled. And of course, there's always a probability of, of death from MS. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so you can imagine how Donna felt. I mean, that's, being diagnosed with MS, that's tough enough. And then to find out she's got to have brain surgery. I mean, it's kind of like, what else can happen? You know, what else? I'll probably get run over by a Mack truck on the <laughs> way home. You know, I mean, sometimes in life, you know, you just feel like that you are a rag doll in the mouth of a dog. Right. And you just feel like you've been shook to and fro. And how much more can you take? Okay. And uh, Donna, we've talked about this a little bit, but also too in the future, we don't know when, but we're going to be planning another week long show about homeschooling moms because we've got yes. some subject matter experts in there who can come in because um, a lot of people are looking at that as an alternative, let me say. Yep. So we want to provide some good quality information there. So be sure Absolutely. and follow, follow us on Facebook. We'll be making announcements on that and uh, we'll be more than <laughs> we're going to be doing a lot of announcements when Rennie Gabriel is going yeah. to be with us that week, because I know what Rennie brings to the party. Oh, yeah. And he brings it, a whole party mix. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. So if you know someone that's got more month than they got money, Rennie Gabriel can take that person help that person not only, uh, you know, get out of debt, 
but also invest in themselves for the future at the same time. He's going to say some things and he's going to share some information with you uh -huh. that you've never heard before because all the gurus tell you, pay off your credit cards first. Right. And, and <laughs> Rennie says, no, you just make sure you, you know, you make an effort to pay on them. And I don't want to steal his thunder, but he says, you got to start paying yourself. Right. And uh, he, he has done it. And uh, the thing I really like about Rennie is that he is so eager and willing and sharing and caring to share with others. And one of the organizations he's associated with, it is a service dog. Yes. And what they have done, they train dogs that they get from the pound or the animal shelters. Okay. Hey, they take these dogs and they train them for about a year and a half, right? A year to a year and a half, depending on the dog. And they give them the soldiers that suffer from PTSD. Mm -hmm. Now the beauty in that is, every, listen to this folks, every single soldier mm -hmm. that received a dog not one has committed suicide. Right. So you can see why Rennie is really engrossed with that mm -hmm. and just embraces that particular program <clacht> because it's a wonderful program. Well, and it, it's a win-win. I mean, this oh, is yeah. this is this is the beauty about giving from your heart. So it's a win for the dog because the dog gets rescued from a shelter. Right, mm -hmm. which he may, may or he or she may not have gotten rescued otherwise. Mm -hmm. They train the dog. It goes to a sh uh, a soldier in need. The soldier gets rescued, mm -hmm. and everybody it, it, everybody wins in the end because we all rescue each other. That's oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like a Walt Disney fairy tale. You know, we all rescue each other in the end. Oh yeah. And uh, I've often said, and it's so true. Can you imagine what a wonderful world this world would be if everyone had the heart of the family dog? Oh right. my goodness. I mean, they, they love you unconditionally and you know, they're just, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they're just there for you. You are their life and they yep. love being around you. Uh, you know, how do you not like that? You know, some somebody just being around you and just loving you, especially an animal. Because there are some people that I've known in my lifetime that their dog, their beloved pet, is the only thing in this whole wide world that shows them one minute of love. Right. No one else does. But right. that dog is there for them. Yep. And I, rem I remember back in the 70s, it was, it was some... Uh, I don't know where the family was from. I want to say California. I'm not sure. <clears throat> but the mother had gotten up in years and the son and the daughter, they really didn't have a good rapport with their mother, which is sad. You can understand when you're a teenager, you're going to do dumb and stupid things. But come on, when you get to be in your 30s and 40s, come on right. now. You know, That's your go. mom. Right, right. And uh, she was pretty well to do. And she had this little poodle. And this little poodle just, you know, was her life. It was the only love she had in her life. And when she passed away, uh, she had the attorney write it to where each one of the son and the daughter got a one dollar bill. That way they could not come back and say they were overlooked. <laughs> and the little pup, I mean, he was well taken care of. Yeah. And they were all upset because they did not love their mother. What they were in love with was her money. Right. And that's about as weak and as cheap and as horrible as you can get. Very sad. Yeah. Very sad. Yeah, it really is. And uh, I kind of liked it because I thought, hey, they got their just <laughs> desserts, <laughs> you know. It was a nice, I mean, I like stories like that. I do, you know, I mean, it's just amazing. <clears throat> and we had, uh, <clears throat> we had a great radio show today and, and I'm just so glad there, but we're, we haven't really got into our subject yet. Have we, we were no, talking about, we but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about entrepreneurs this week, <clears throat> especially yeah. the home-based business and whether you are 
an independent, uh, you know, marketer, mm -hmm. or if you're in business for yourself, or if you're in multi-level marketing or direct marketing, you've all got the same problem. You know, you got to be able to get your message out to your ideal client and be able to attract business. Right. And Donna, I know that you are a huge fan of the six minute webinar. Oh, yes. <laughs> I adore the six minute webinar. It, what it, it just helps us, you know, cut right down to the chase. Most of us, we get so excited about what we do in our business that we get in our own way because we can't shut up <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to yep. put it really simple, you know, and I'm as guilty as, as anybody else out there. Um, so what the six minute webinar does is it just breaks everything down for you beautifully. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it helps you put the words in because in when you're trying to get your message across to people, less is more mm -hmm. less is more i remember a couple of times in my life uh i don't remember the details but i remember i was looking to buy something and the salesman's standing there and he's got this this motor mouth and in my mind i'm thinking why don't you just hush you know i'm sold i mean let me go you know and you know when he's around you know when he's made a sale and he's got his customer there and now he really feels good and he wants to talk more you know right and this one case, I never will forget, I was at a car dealership and I was walking around the showroom, I was getting my car serviced and uh, <laughs> the sales manager motioned for the salesman to come over and he says, let your customer go. <laughs> they bought the car, they want to get out there, they want to drive it and you want to stand there and yak, 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 yak. Hey, shut up. Up. Wow. And he says, do me a favor, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome well you know that's what we do we we tend to over talk and when we when we tell too much we lose our audience yes they lose interest because you yeah. know especially especially uh if you know and, and i'm sure most everyone's been around somebody one way or the other in their life where all they do is talk about themselves for the first 15 or 20 minutes Oh yeah. That That's does nothing for your audience. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And, and you know, there's one thing, if you're a speaker out there, I just want to share this with you. Or if you're talking to a customer and a customer asks you a question, don't say, that's a very good question. I've heard that over and over and over. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see on our TV show, we got over 6 million downloads. So I've interviewed a lot of people in my life and I know Donna has too, but if, Donna asked me a question. I'm not going to say that's a very good question, you know, because it's so worn out. Stop. Right. Don't say that, you know, and you just go right into your answer. You know, you could start up with something like, well, it basically started back when I was, you know, what about right. it, whatever. But don't say, oh, that's a great question. Right. Because. It is to you, but it isn't to the audience, right? <laughs> right. It, it's only to to the person who's saying it, who's receiving it. Excuse me. I'm I'm getting better. I tell you that because the last three the three weeks I've been battling bronchitis. So those of you that uh, you know, like I was telling, uh, I told Bill today during the break on the radio show, I said, you know, this bronchitis is like mosquitoes. Both of them like me, so I guess I'm a sweet guy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, a couple of weeks ago, I was laying there on a the couch, and all I wanted to do was just lie there. I didn't feel like doing anything else. I mean, it was just it just wore me out, you know. But, it does. Mm -hmm. I'm still getting over it a little bit. But anyway, our sponsor today is the Six Minute Webinar. They are our sponsor. And if you'd like to uh, have a treat, a Friday freebie, Listen up. I've already done it before and I'm going to do it again. But the first five people, let me tell you, do this first. Go to the six minute webinar on Facebook. You can actually see people from all walks of life right. who created their own six minute webinar about their product. And you be the judge. If you like what you see, 
for the first five people, send us an email at inspiration at E360 TV. Five people only now. Yep. And I will personally sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and help you fill out your very own six-minute webinar free of charge. What a gift. Mm. What a gift. It yeah. is a game changer, folks. Yeah. That's worth about, you know, minimum about $2,000. Yes. So, uh, you know, that's my gift to you, Friday Freebie. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead, Don. Let me mute my mic. I need to cough. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wouldn't make me giggle, it'd be a lot easier, Jim. <laughs> He does this all the time. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it. You know. He gets me giggling and then he starts laughing. And then I laugh more. Yeah. And then I start snorting and then he loses it. <laughs> yeah. What I what I do sometimes, I get her giggling. I say, go ahead, Donna, and she can't talk, you know. <laughs> but that had a little bit of a cough there in my throat, so I had to clear that. <laughs> but, but when it comes to multi-level marketing. The one problem that you have there is that you run out of people. Right. And you don't know how to, to attract people to your business. The six minute webinar is a one in all. It is. It's a one stop mm -hmm. shop. Mm -hmm. We used Don and I both used our six minute webinar to craft our talk when we were on a summit in India. Right. And Donna, who was the guest of honor there? Oh, that was the King of Omen. He was on Sunday. And, uh, you know, it, even though he didn't speak, he, of course, he had somebody speak for him. But we came from a place of, first of all, very authentic. There is nothing, you know, who, who Jim, who you see is Jim on TV, who you see me, that's just who we are. We are we're no different on TV or off TV. Right. However, we were very authentic and we, we carried that through in our speech. Mm -hmm. But our speech came through really well um, because it was precise and it didn't have a lot of stuff, fluff that made no sense to anybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. It was it was just meat and potatoes and right to the point. Mm -hmm. And I gave my talk on Saturday. Donna was scheduled to be on Sunday. And so Sunday morning early, I get a text from Vanya, the young lady put on the summit. And she says, Jim, can you attend again today? And with my warped sense of humor, I said, well, I'm out of makeup and my hair is a mess, but I'll see what I can do. And. I showed up and then she called on me to speak again. And right. it was because of the power of the six minute webinar. Mm -hmm. And our initial goal was to be able to make a good presentation because we knew if the King of Omen was going to be there as guest of honor. Right. Anytime royalty is on TV, you can rest assured there's going to be a bunch of other people there watching. Right. And uh, that's exactly what happened because we were broadcast over in the UK, Indonesia, Philippines, Japan, just all over, weren't we, Donna? Right. Yes. In fact, we were on the main uh, TV news uh, station in yeah. India. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in the Bangladesh newspaper, they wrote up, they said, you know, wrote up about the event and uh, mentioned the Sultan, the King of Oman, is the guest of honor. And the next person mentioned in that article blew me away. Well, yeah, it was <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. TV presenter Jim Grant was also there. I'm going like, uh, that Jim Grant or this Jim Grant? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, also, too, uh, as a thank you to Va Vanna, we took her under our wing and we created this, helped her create her own six minute webinar. And when she saw it, Blew her mind. Yep. Sure Blew her mind. And now we're involved with E360 TV, the six minute webinar. We're putting on a summit again in the latter part of August. Yes. 
And that all generated just because Donna and I says, hey, we want to mm, we want to make a good presentation here. Right. Like anybody would if you're going to be on international TV all over the place. <laughs> right. So that that was our why. Little did we know that there was a bigger benefit down the road. Right. But mm -hmm. again, you know, when you help other people, mm -hmm. it comes back to you. Oh, it does. Because, you know, our first and foremost thought was when when you as a speaker, whether you're at work, whether you're your own business, whatever. But when you give a presentation, your job is, yes, you want to represent yourself to to mm -hmm. your highest level, mm -hmm. but you want to make whoever's putting on that that presentation, you want to make them shine. Yes, because your job as a speaker, if you ever get invited to speak on anybody's summit or even anybody's show, your right. job is to make your the person who invited you look good to their audience. Absolutely. And don't start out with, I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, I'm a trainer, I'm a worst selling author or anything like that. Because a lot of people get out there and for the first seven seconds, they say, I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, I'm a trainer, I'm a best-selling author. And they've just flat down shot seven minutes. So they sound like everybody else. So the people sitting out there, okay, so what makes you special? Right. And what happens when you start out that way, this is mm -hmm. what people do in the audience. Yeah. You've You're already exactly lost right. it. They pick mm -hmm. up their phone. They do mm -hmm. something because all they hear is wah, 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 because it doesn't do anything for them. Yeah. There's it's no all benefit about, for them. It's all about me, 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 me. Let me tell you about me. And no one cares about you. Right. Not at that point. And the reason we're using talking a lot about speakers and using that as a good analogy, because the same thing happens to the business owner. Yeah. Let, let me tell you about my business. And let me give you a good checkup from the neck up. Look at your website. Is your website attractive to a stranger? Get feedback from people that you know and trust and say, look at my website. Tell me what you like about it. Right. And tell me what you don't like about it. Because I heard it said one time, it was true with me. Guilty as charged. I didn't intend for it to be that way, but my website looked like it was a shrine for me. Right. Have you been there? <laughs> At least I'm honest enough to admit it, you know? And Don, I tell you, it's a... Uh, Feedback is good, isn't it? It is good. And, and that's the other thing. When, when you are in any position to receive feedback, it's not always going to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always going to go your way. You're mm -hmm. going to get some, some constructive criticism. Take that for what it is, because honestly, folks, it is the only way we can learn. Mm -hmm. And, and it, sometimes it takes a while. Um, I'll, I'll give oh, yeah. you a case, case in point. Many, 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 many years ago, uh, I was um, modeling professionally and I was doing a photo shoot and we were doing a practice run and I kept saying the word over and over and over wrong, but I never heard it right in, in this specific, excuse me, specific line I had. And mm -hmm. I couldn't hear it say, uh, that I was saying it wrong. And everybody was laughing and I was like, okay, what's so funny? And they're like, well, the product name is this. And I said, yeah, I know. And then I would say it wrong again and they'd crack up and, and I'm like, I don't get it, what's so funny? And mm -hmm. they finally said, this is what you're saying, Donna. And I'm like, oh, that is funny. You know, because yeah. I, I, I honestly didn't know I was saying it wrong. It was just coming out that way. So mm -hmm. it's okay when people laugh at you or, or it's not because they think, you know, less of you. It's because it's, it can be very humorous. So take mm -hmm. that for what it is because we yeah. learn from those, those mistakes. Oh, yeah, because if everybody just pats you on the back, tell you, it's, it, right. everything's okay, it's great, this and that, da-da-da-da-da, you won't learn a thing. No, you will not. Uh -uh. 
you will and you will keep going on and you're just going to get rusty on all fronts. Yep. And uh, that's that's and being able to scrub the rust off and come back and make yourself shine anew. That's easier said than done. Well, you know, even Jim, let's just let's just tell them how how we work when we're working on okay. something important. Jim and I are partners. And when we're working on something important, whether it's together for our business or mm -hmm. whether it's individual, it is not uncommon for me to call Jim or Jim to call me and us to go over it and say, hey, I, I want your ears. Tell me mm -hmm. if it sounds OK. Tell yeah. me if it needs to be different. Yeah, exactly. Because we need somebody who that we can trust to mm -hmm. tell us the truth and say, you know what? Just tweak this word here. It sounds a little sounds a little off. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. And sometimes, guys, it's the simplest words. Sometimes it's the conjunctions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see, that's where Donna really blesses me because I've got a degree in Southern slang, <laughs> and I worked hard to get that. You know, I really did. <laughs> And uh, three years, two months, and one day, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but seriously, uh, there's a lot of things that you do not see when you create it. Right. How many times have you been in a little bit of a hurry? You sent out an email, and if Ooh. you're like me, your mind is quicker than your fingers. Yep. And you you don't read it, then you send it out, and you're going, oh. I Should left this read yeah. That better. Yeah. Yeah. I could have done that better. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just, you know, human nature. You get in a hurry and you forget and haste makes waste. And we've all heard that. Right. But my point being is that in business, you want to set your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking about the six minute webinar, but I'm telling you, I've never seen a funnel and I've seen a few, you might say. I've seen advertising campaigns and all that, but you create your own six minute webinar. You can turn it into a YouTube video and how expensive is it? And how much time does it take Donna for someone to do social media posting and put their YouTube link there? Well, in, in, in the advertising world out there and you get somebody to do that, you're looking at between, We'll just go on the low end of three hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. on up to yeah. thousands of dollars a month. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And I've spent a lot of money on advertising over the years. And mm -hmm. you know what I find about advertisers, the people who are in it, oh yeah, they can part the Red Sea and lead you into the promised land. Yeah. So you 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 know, give them your money, they run your ads and no sales. And yep. you call them up, what happened? Well, uh, you know, you got to get your brand name out there and it's got to be known and blah, 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 blah. Well, why didn't you tell me this in the beginning? Right. Why did you put me together with cheap glue? You know, right. that's that's kind of the way it rubs, hey, it rubs me. Right. My favorite one is, well, you didn't understand how to, you know, maximize uh, your ROI. Return on investment. Mm hmm. OK, so why didn't you help me? So this is what we're saying. Get people in your corner who will help you, who will talk mm -hmm. to you from their experience, mm -hmm. their knowledge and their pain points that they've already gone through so that yeah. you don't have to go through those same pain points. Exactly. And to make sure the people have got your back. Right. And the beauty about the six minute webinar is that when someone sees it, there's no gray area at all. They know exactly what you're going to deliver. And there's no, you know, explaining afterwards because you never have to explain for quality. Right. You never have to apologize for quality. And if you want to have present yourself and look professional and, pro and provide a, a very quality way of getting your information out to your client, Six minute webinar is it. Yes. And again, I encourage you to go to our Facebook page, look at the different six minute webinars that people just like you and me and Donna have done. Now, me and Donna don't have ours there, but it's for other people to put their six minute webinar there. And if you like what you see, remember, I'm going to offer the first five people the opportunity to send me an email and I will sit down with you one-on-one -on -one yep. 
yes. over Zoom, fill out the six minute webinar, just like I did with Thana, the young lady from India. And before she got done reading, because it gets delivered within a minute that we finish right into your email box. Right. Super quick. Yeah. And <laughs> she was reading that thing and she says, oh, my gosh. She says, can I sell this? And I said, well, we do have an affiliate program, but let's finish the six minute webinar first. <laughs> And that's what led into us putting on a summit about leadership and clarity. And we're going to have educators there. We're going to have uh, entrepreneurs there. And we're going to have corporations, you know, corporate people there. And right. it's going to be panel and key, uh, keynote speakers and all that. So that's, that's what the six minute webinar did for me and Donna when all we wanted to do was just put to put on a good presentation right. in front of the, the world. <laughs> And the King of Almond, the guest of honor. And uh, because we knew there's going to be a lot of people there. Right. And it just amazed us all how, how little Vana, Vanya, how she rubs shoulders with a lot of important people. Yes. Well, she she's a, a very people. talented woman. She's an extremely <clears throat> talented businesswoman. Yeah. Very focused, very down to earth, and uh, very trustworthy. Yes. Yes, she is. And trustworthiness is very important in a business. Well, and, it, and we've talked about that this week on the show, Jim. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, because if you're going to offer a product to someone or something, <clears throat> even if your company doesn't have the courage to say, if you buy this product, if it is not, you know, live up to your expectations, I will personally guarantee you your money back within 30 days. No hassle, no questions asked. Right. Because that gives you instant credibility. And it also builds your confidence in the product that you're offering. Okay. Because right. right. that's very important. You know, and, and one of the other things we talked about earlier in the week, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember if it was Monday or Tuesday with uh, you and Tanya, but Tanya. Mm -hmm. um, it, when you have a partner, whether you go into business with mm -hmm. a partner that, you know, a friend or a family or somebody else you know through business, mm -hmm. make sure that you do your little checklist with them, right? Mm -hmm. That they fit the category in which you are coming from. So mm -hmm. they fit your integrity specs, if you will, and that you have that contract. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, whether it's friend, friend or family, if you mm -hmm. do not have that contract in place, things can get really sideways really quick. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> as sad as it is, the days are gone of like Arnold Palmer <clears throat> and Mark. Right. I, I can't remember Mark's last name now off the top of my head, but. Handshake. They, they did the handshake. Yes. <laughs> they created IMG and that corporation was the very first for a representative to represent a professional athlete. Right. And it was done over a handshake and they knew exactly what each one was going to do. They knew exactly what each one was going to get and on up until Arnold passed away, right? <clears throat> there was never any squabble. That is a beautiful example of how important your word is. But in this day and time, as Donna said, it's best to spell it out. So it's kind of like a, well, it's kind of like a, a scorecard at a baseball game. I mean, the umpire, the other team, and the team that you're on, they know when you take the field, they know who's going to first, who's going to second, who's going to third, and you can put me in outfield. That's okay. <laughs> well, and but, it keeps everybody in their lane. Okay. So it keeps everybody um, in, into knowing what their particular role is within the business um, and how much they get so that nobody can, yeah. can exaggerate and um, just, I'm going to outright say it, steal from the company. Mm -hmm, Cause right? that happened. Right. So it does happen, unfortunately, more times than not. So mm -hmm. it is so important to, to get that contract and they're not that expensive. You can, gosh, you can search the web and download it 
you can go in and you know put it together how you want it and go have it notarized. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, pretty simple. Yeah. Exactly. And, and you can do all that for no money at all, because like right. Donna says, you can find what you want. It will fit your needs on the Internet. And you can also create your own using them as a guide and like going down to your bank. I mean, a notary, they'll they'll notarize that for free. And uh, absolutely. It's a smart way of doing business, because uh, in business, one of the things that you have to be aware of is that if two people are in business together, one will always, well, not always, but it's it's not in, unusual for one to feel like they're either putting in more effort or they're putting in more money. Right. Or they're contributing more than the other one. And that creates jealousy and that creates greed. And both of those. And mistrust. Yes. All of those are a. Well, that's just death for a, a business relationship. Yeah, it's, it really it's, a, it's, a con it's a killer for a business. Yeah, it really is. And uh, <clears throat> Donna and I, like she, like she said, we're partners here and uh, we work together very well. And, you know, she knows what I'm going to do. I know what she's going to do. And, uh, you know, it's just a win-win situation for both of us. Right. But we didn't plan it. No, no, we didn't. It came to us. And as I like to say, it's all Marty Haggard's fault. <laughs> right? Good old Marty. God, I love that man. He's so sweet. Oh, oh yeah. He is. a M Marty Haggard is, uh, he really is just down to earth. He's a yes, simple he guy. His dad being Merle Haggard and him being the oldest son and traveling with his dad and knowing all those people like Johnny Cash and Chris Christopherson and, and, uh, I think it's really to say, who didn't he know? Yeah, that would be the shorter <laughs> list. I mean, he, he didn't know them as stars. No, he knew them as just, people. They were just friends of the family. Yeah, he was part of their he was part of their extended family. And right. uh, he just figured, hey, this is the way all kids grow up. Right. And, and I want to share with you his story because Don and I both love this particular story. Uh Glenn Campbell was a session musician and Merle for Merle. was hmm? for Merle for Merle. Yeah. And uh, he was on all the major songs that Merle had there in the late, in the mid to late sixties. And uh, he had just signed on with Capitol records and that was who Merle was with. Right. And he had a song he wanted, he recorded and uh, he just wasn't capital, wasn't excited about it. And so he, he went to Merle with it. Hmm? He wasn't getting a whole lot of traction with it. No, they weren't excited about it at all. So he goes to Merle <clears throat> and Merle at this time had about five or six number one hits. Oh, he was a huge star at that time. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> oh yeah. And he says, Merle, I got this song and I'm with Capitol Records like you are. And how do they do, you know, such a great promotion job for you? And Merle, this is a good nicety to know for you entrepreneurs. Yeah. Merle said, I don't wait on Capitol. I promote myself or words to that effect. Right. And at that time, there was about 2000 country and Western stations across the United States. And uh, and Merle just says, let me hear your song. And he played it. And Merle says, that is a number one hit. Yep. He says, they were in Bakersville, California. He says, you go back to Los Angeles, bring me 2,000 singles, come back over here on Saturday. He says, I'm going to be sending out my new record to these 2,000 DJs. Yeah, DJs. And he says, I'll put your record in with mine with a personal note from me to please give this record a spin and let it stand on its own merit. And, and, he, and he did. And otherwise, the world may have never known of Glenn Campbell. And, and that song was to Phoenix. By the time I get to Phoenix. <laughs> 
Um, I mean, it's just, that's yep. how it started. And it went but, over, it went number one overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essentially. And, it, mm -hmm. But that's entrepreneurship. It's, you mm -hmm. know, it's just like, I look at it like this, folks. When you're in business for yourself, you still need help. It's just like mm -hmm. when we're little or we have our own babies, mm -hmm. we have to teach them how to walk, how to eat, how to get dressed. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that we don't know. Mm -hmm. Same thing applies when we're in business. Get somebody mm -hmm. with you who you trust, who you like, who mm -hmm. you admire, and let them help you. Let them be your teacher, your guide, yeah. because they have experience then that will save you time and money oh, and yeah. frustration. Yes. I, I, well, I was going to say aggravation too. I just, uh, right? you know, you get the nail on the head. Also too, now for you home-based business people, we hit on this earlier in the week too, but make sure you find a CPA because any CPA worth their grain, worth their weight in salt, the old saying goes, they will give you 30 minutes, maybe more longer of a complimentary, complimentary uh, meeting. Right. And ask them about how, what the tax code is because you can charge so much of your rent or mortgage. Right. You can charge so much of utilities. Your um, cell phone, your supplies. Yeah your your uh, mileage right mm -hmm. and what you do your your clothes mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so it just depends so getting with a good cpa and yeah. having to go over that with you oh my goodness that's huge that can save you lots of money on your taxes yes it can and a lot of folks realize that hey i can't afford not to have a home-based business Right. You know, because uh, the, the savings on the taxes offset the costs for them, like in a multi-level marketing or direct marketing. But the benefit is the same. Right. And so that's why you want to get with uh, a subject matter expert there, a CPA who is knowledgeable in the local, uh, the, the local, the counties. I'm going to get say, let me get this going right here. The city, the county, the state and the federal uh, <laughs> tax laws. Because they all vary from from city to city, county to county, state to state. State to state, yep. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that you pay your fair share of taxes, but not one penny more. Right. You yeah. want to be compliant so it doesn't come back to bite you later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And keep good records. Keep Ooh, good that's records. That's so important. And here's another thing. If you are, if that is not your forte to keep up with the paperwork, hire somebody to help you mm -hmm. yeah. because that will make or break you when mm -hmm. it comes to, mm -hmm. if you get audited by the IRS on your business and that's your mm -hmm. sole income, holy mm -hmm. moly, it can be a nightmare. Yes. I got audited by the IRS back in the nineties when I ran my manufacturing company. And I'm telling you that was a three month ordeal. Mm -hmm. Now, naturally, that wasn't a home-based business. But what I'm saying is that every single thing that I could not, uh, you know, verify, see, a cancel check is as good as a receipt. Right. Okay? A credit card bill is as good as a receipt. That's exactly what it is. And uh, my point being is that uh, this one individual with the IRS, he was giving me a very hard time, very unprofessional. And uh, I just went down and I filed a congressional complaint on him. And what I did, you go to the con uh, your local U.S. congressman's office and say, I want to file a complaint. And it's a privacy form. And back in those days, I just listed, OK, this is what my problem is. And then the three things I wanted. I wanted this person to be written up for their unprofessional conduct. Right. I wanted them to be removed from the uh, <clears throat> The the, from the investigation. And I wanted the investigation to continue to clear my good name. Right. And it all came down. Funny story. I don't, I don't think I've ever told you this, Donna, but funny story. We were at the IRS building down in Houston, Texas. And uh, <clears throat> Earl Johnson, the same guy was the uh, CPA or he helped get the, the old company compact computer for some of you folks might remember old compact computer. He was, he was their tax guy. And we were in there and, 
the IRS guy, he apologized to me. We're very sorry you had this problem, yada, da, 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 da. And they go over everything. He says, Mr. Grant, it looks like you owe us $50. And Earl says, no, you owe Mr. Grant $50. <laughs> I'm like, I like his answer better than yours. That's what I told the guy. <laughs> and uh, he said, well, I see your point there. He said, well, based on everything that he has went through, let's just call it even. <laughs> and uh, on the way out, Earl says, Jim, you've been audited uh, a spot audit twice, but this here was a full blown audit. He says, man, they can't touch you if you didn't pay another penny in tax because you could just start hauling discrimination. I says, I don't even want to hear that. <laughs> and, and I said, Earl, I says, if you had got my 50 bucks in there, I would take you out and buy you dinner. But since you turned Candyman on me in there and give my 50 bucks away, you can buy lunch. <laughs> but I, but I bought it, but I bought him lunch. I was just joking with him. You know, you know and, and when I lived in Kansas, I was, I was a co-owner with a, a trucking company and mm -hmm. we got audited uh, by oh, the state. Yeah. We mm -hmm. got audited by the state and I did all the books. And let me tell you, it was, it was grueling. I mean, I, I passed. They, they thought that there was some shady stuff going on, but there wasn't. Uh -huh. and, and more than anything, they're looking for when in trucking, you have to pay uh, road fuel tax mm -hmm. in every state, depending on what what you're licensed for. But you have to pay road fuel search tax. And mm -hmm. that doing those reports mm -hmm. is a monster. Let me tell you, I was a cranky girl for a couple of days when I was doing those. Oh, yeah. I, but it was a two day audit and I thought I was going to lose my mind and mm -hmm. I passed because I didn't have anything to hide, but it was mm. still, it was still unnerving. So mm -hmm. just knowing that, you know, you have all your paperwork, you can explain why mm -hmm. all your I's are dotted and your, you know, T's are crossed. That makes all the difference. It really does. And uh, therefore I doubt, you know, your chances of being audited as a home business is very minute, but right. You know, the fact of it is, if you got the proper documentation, you can take the legal tax deduction. That's going to save you money. That's the right. message we want to get across to you. And ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to cut the this, uh, this show short a little earlier than we normally do because we've Donna has a very important mission. I what is that mission? <laughs> Well, I recently, uh, we had adopted four kittens and today I took them down to get them spayed and neutered. And so I have to go pick them up in our Phoenix traffic. Mm. And if she's late, she's got to pay extra, right? Right. I'm yeah. like, what? I got to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I tell you, well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to cut this short because uh, Donna's got about a 18 minute drive and she's got about 40, no, let's see, 33 minutes to get there or something with Phoenix traffic. So we want to give her yeah, a break. We wish you well. Mile drive. <laughs> mm -hmm. But listen, thank you so very much. We will keep you posted on Rennie Gabriel, yes. you know, the the week he's going to be on about how to get out of debt and acquire wealth on any, on any income. And we got other great shows coming up with the, the homeschooling for parents that want to do that because there's a huge interest in that now. And we'll be back on Monday and we're going to start a week talking about cancer. Yes. And Jim, and I would like to invite our audience. If you have questions for Rainy coming up on the money, mm -hmm. Email them in to us so that we can we can address them ahead of time with him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'd be glad to. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to cover a lot of the basic questions here is over and over and over. But, you know, any question, email us at Inspiration E360 TV. Please. Our staff will our staff will get it to us and we'll be more than happy to hang on to those and share. We'll just say, you know, we'll mention your first name, not your last name, but we'll right. mention your first name and say that you'd like to ask Randy this particular question. He'd love it. And on behalf of Donna, myself, and all the good folks here behind the scenes at E360 TV, as I like to say, we hope you have a wonderful weekend. We hope that you and your loved ones are healthy, happy, and blessed. Be sure and love yourself first, then you can love others. And do have a wonderful weekend and give yes. thanks 
for all your blessings in life. And stay we'll see safe, you. folks. You bet. And don't catch bronchitis. I did it for all of us. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>